Hey folks, Ken MacArthur here, best-selling author of Impact, How to Get Noticed, Motivate Millions, and Make a Difference in a Noisy World. Great to have so many people here. I see some familiar faces on the call, and we are excited to have Todd Brown joining us. Todd has been a featured JV Alert live speaker, both in Orlando and Arlington. Some of you who are on the call right now, I think... Uh, saw them, saw him there, and uh, for those of you who are brand new, uh, you're going to have a, a wonderful experience. Uh, uh, Todd's got a great uh, brain, a wonderful heart, and uh, and he really knows his systems. He really knows what it takes to build uh, a business, you know, from the the uh, front end forward. And uh, one of the things that he's really, you know, focused for me is the importance of that front end, and I think he's going to talk a little bit about uh, how to build your funnels and, and uh, how that can make a huge difference in your business. There is nobody who is uh, better suited to uh, do that. He's got three secret uh, pieces of the highest converting marketing funnels uh, to share with you, and I know that you're going to be excited to learn you know, uh, the things that uh, he's going to talk to you about, including how to ensure your lead magnet has a differentiated hook, so your opt-in rates uh, soars above 51%, and how to craft educational content that sells like crazy for you, uh, and the fact that you don't have to do a hard sell or come off like a used card salesman, that's always great, too. Uh, he's got how to double, triple, and even quadruple your sales conversion rate. Everybody can use that. Uh, Todd calls that the unique results delivery mechanism, and he's got a lot more. I just want to hit on a couple of things. We've got JV Alert Live coming up very, very soon in Denver. Uh, it's the 26th through the 28th of July. If you can possibly get to Denver, you should be there. Just an incredible group of people uh, that are going to be at that event, including Joel Com, Rick Raditz, uh, uh, David Hancock, uh, Ray Edwards, uh, Robert Plank, uh, so many more. Honey uh, and Blaine uh, Parker are going to be there. Uh, just a great, great group of uh, amazing people. Everything from uh, branding and how to uh, brand your business, you know, from copywriting expertise to idea generation, uh, being creative in your business. Uh, really locking in those bottom line results, you know, some of the social media things. We're doing uh, lots of new stuff for uh, JV Alert live events. And Denver's really getting exciting, and we've got some uh, great, great TED Talk-style talk, uh, talks that are going to be taking place at Denver. That's one of the things we kicked off first in Orlando, then we repeated in Arlington, and they just keep getting better and better because we get super high-quality people that are doing that. And uh, so I'm, I'm really excited about that part of it, too. So if you can possibly join us in Denver, then definitely uh, go to jvalertlive.com, get signed up right away, and, um, and let's see you there for sure. The day before, we're doing the one-day intensive with Joel Com. Joel Com's going to basically talk about his 18 years' worth of uh, online business stuff. Uh, in a special day, small group, uh, very, very intimate. Uh, the first part of the day is going to be about how uh, Joel built his business, and he's done so many things. You know, he's really a legend in Internet marketing. Uh, so he's going to go through his business in the first part of the day. And then the second part of the day is really delving down into you and your particular challenges. You get that great creative mind to work with you one-on-one. -on -one, and, of course, I'll be there to help out, too. So that's going to be really exciting. If you're interested in that, definitely go to onedayintensive.com forward slash Denver uh, special, special small group uh, event. And I'm really looking forward to that. Coming up in the months to come, we've got some amazing, amazing things. Um, starting out with uh, August the 8th through the 12th, we'll be doing One Day Intensive and a JV Alert Live in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. That's the first time that I've returned to Philadelphia in a long time. I'm excited about that. Uh, potentially, we're looking at the following locations coming up. You can hold the dates if you want. Um, September 19th through the 22nd, we're looking at Scottsdale, Arizona. Uh, October 17th through the 20th in Atlanta, November 7th through the 10th in San Diego, 
December 8th, uh, sorry, 5th through the 8th in Washington, D.C. And then after the start of the year, we're looking at uh, places like uh, Vegas in January, Orlando, Tampa, or Miami in February, March, uh, Los Angeles, uh, April, Chicago, and back in Philly again in June. So exciting, exciting stuff coming up. Uh, more and more people rushing in. Like Quality, 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 like our guest today, and I won't delay it anymore. Uh, do go out on your social media and invite people to join us. Uh, you can uh, just send them straight to uh, KenMacArthur.com, and I'll type it into the chat area so that you get it right. But it's KenMacArthur.com forward slash open for our open um, webcasts that we do for our impact action team and you can invite anybody that you'd like to join us uh, talking all about um, uh, some wonderful stuff with conversion and funnels so uh, Todd so sorry to take so long to get to the uh, event but people have been pouring in as we've been uh, starting and they're still pouring in we're not going to wait any longer we're going to get right to the facts and to you so happy to have you here today well, thank you so much. I'm uh, I'm thrilled to uh, to be here. I appreciate the introduction, and and as always, I appreciate the uh, the opportunity to to chat with uh, with your folks. And so let me let me make sure that uh, I got my my screen on. So can you see my screen? Well, let's see here. Um, oh, how about now? Uh, I see it. <laughs> now, so yeah, you can see got it. it. Perfect. Okay, cool. <clears throat> okay, so without uh, further delay, let me just get to it. Uh, first of all, I appreciate every one of you being here with me today. I promise you that the next 60 minutes is going to be worth its weight in gold for you. If you have never been to any one of my uh, trainings or webinars or anything like that, uh, you'll see very quickly that I go at lightning pace. And so I have an hour with you today. And then, of course, if there are any questions at the end, I'll definitely hang out and, and answer whatever questions there are. But I'm going to pack as much content into the next hour as possible, and then I'm going to make sure that we get you uh, out of here on time. Like Ken said, uh, what we're going to be talking about today are what I call the th three of the secret pieces of the highest converting marketing funnels. And you'll understand in just a little bit why I call them uh, secret pieces. You know, you'll see also, if you've never been to any of my trainings, webinars, or anything like that, that um, I hate hype. I'm not into the whole hypey, hard sell, uh, you know, wild claims type of uh, <laughs> type of copy. Besides the fact that it just doesn't work anymore in today's marketplace, but I call these secret pieces because these are three of the core elements of every high converting marketing funnel that you very rarely see in the typical internet marketing funnel. And so you're going you're gonna to see very quickly that these elements are very rarely addressed, very rarely discussed, uh, very rarely included in the typical IM marketing funnel. But they are included in some of the most profitable funnels in the quote-unquote real direct response marketing world, like with companies like uh, Agora and Boardroom and Weiss Financial and, and so on. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about that shortly. We're talking about these secret pieces, if you will, these core pieces that produce uh, lead values of $10 and up. Imagine you getting $10 per lead. $10 per lead, that's $10 for every opt-in that you get on your uh, on your squeeze page. And so before we jump in, and I'm going to go through this as quick as I can, before we jump in and get to the content and then go at crazy lightning pace, I want to give you kind of a little bit, a little bit of background on me, uh, who I am, and really how I got to this point in uh, being considered one of the, if not the most foremost authority on uh, on wildly profitable marketing funnels. So, of course, for those of you that are are new to me, that is uh, that's my uh, ugly mug there, and this is a shot of me with uh, my wife Kelly and my two daughters, 
Uh, if you have heard me speak anywhere before, then you know that my family is the most important thing to me, being able to spend time with them, quality time. In fact, just as a side note, uh, the thing that really drove me to get into internet marketing in the first place, and I'm going to talk about it in, in just a second, um, was this whole idea of autonomy. The most important thing to me was not the money. I had a great, great job. I, I'm from uh, originally from New Jersey. And, uh, and I had a great, uh, you know, paying job in New Jersey. I had a, a, a nice um, six-figure, I don't want to call it a corporate job, but I was a VP for a company that owned uh, over 10 upscale health clubs in New Jersey. Uh, I was being paid really well, had a lot, of, uh, a lot of freedom, a lot of flexibility. But the thing that I didn't have was just the ability to wake up when I wanted, do what I wanted, with who, when I wanted, how, where, all of that. And so it was when I was working for this health club company that I really decided uh, I wanted to get into internet marketing. Actually, let me give you, if, if I can, and I'll go through this quick, just because I think it's kind of cool. Let me give you the background. I was working at this health club company, and I was responsible for about $3 million a year in revenue, generating revenue. And I got a, a direct mail piece in the mail, a direct response mail piece. Uh, that was selling a, an information product on how to market uh, using direct response marketing, how to market fitness, you know, uh, exercise, weight loss, that sort of thing. Now, I had never seen a direct response marketing piece before, and so I was enamored with this thing. I saw it. It was, it was uh, like $300 or $400, and so I immediately went to the owner of the company, and I said, I want to buy this. I want to get this. I want to expense it. Are you cool with that? Um, he said, yeah, I got this course, um, and uh, I can't even remember, oh, the, the, the dude's name, this is kind of funny, I, I guess you could say I owe him my, uh, my whole career thus far in, in, uh, in the internet marketing world. The dude who put this package together, his name was Eric Root, he's still around today, he's still involved in one of the largest uh, fitness training uh, organizations. Um, online. Anyway, I was blown away by this whole system that this dude put together, Eric. And so I immediately picked up the phone and called him and said, who did you learn from? And he said, I learned from Dan Kennedy. Dan Kennedy's the guy that, uh, that I really credit. And so I immediately went out and started buying uh, every Dan Kennedy product that, that I could. Actually, I'm embarrassed to say that I, I immediately went on eBay. And, and started buying um, from eBay, used you know all these cassette tapes and VHS tapes and whatnot. And then I ended up starting a, my first information marketing business um, where I was going to share with um, massage therapists how to sell their services because that's really what I was doing for this fitness company. I didn't want to do it for the fitness company because I didn't want there to be a conflict of interest. But so I started marketing, um, I, I created, I took the entire summer and I created this killer home study course like this gigantic course and um, and I started selling it and I knew nothing about the internet I knew nothing about web pages any of that I had no no technical skills make a long story real short I ended up growing that company to the point where it was generating uh, it was generating enough income for me to leave my job in New Jersey uh, leave this job that I had for like 12, 13 years and move my family to Florida. And I'll tell you, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fast forward, but I'll tell you something really cool. One of the most transformative days in my life to this very day was the last day of that job. So I had given, uh, I told the owner of the company, you know, I'm, I'm taking my family, I'm moving down to South Florida blah, blah, blah. I gave them a couple of months just because I was in that kind of uh, position and I had a great relationship with the owner. I wanted to do right by them. So it's the last day uh, and I leave uh, the corporate headquarters and I'm driving home. Now, I don't have a, a job anymore now, right? Like, I'm, I'm, in my mind, I'm, you know, I'm a free man. I'm nervous. I've got some anxiety and whatnot. Every day on my way to work, I used to pass by this lake this gigantic lake. It was really cool. I would drive by this lake, and in New Jersey during the summer it was nice. During the winter it was, you know, partially frozen. Uh, just really cool. Every day going and coming I would drive by this lake. And so on the way home I looked over at that lake and I said, um, wow, this is going to be the last day that I, I have to drive by this, this lake. And I decided to pull over. I pulled up my car 
got out of the car, and, uh, and I walked down to the lake, and I stood at the shoreline of the lake. And as I was looking out, I said, you know what? I, I'm, I'm wear, I've been wearing this button-down shirt every day for years. And it, it had a logo of the, of the company on the shirt. And I said, you know what? I don't have to wear a button-down shirt anymore. I'm, I'm, I don't have to wear this button-down shirt ever again if I don't want. And I unbuttoned the shirt. I took the shirt off. I had an undershirt on underneath it. I took the, the shirt off, unbuttoned every button, took it off, crumpled it up in my hand, threw it as hard as I could into the lake, sat there, watched it submerge under the lake, and then disappear. I chuckled to myself just because of what that represented to me, like that I was free from that, got back in my car, and, uh, and, and drove home. And, and the rest is history. And so I really started online in, in 2003. Now, I moved to South Florida, and I happened to move... Uh, about 15 minutes away from Rich Sheffern. And Rich, Rich and I, uh, I was actually very early on when I decided to go, go full time in the business. I knew I needed to learn about business systemization. I knew marketing, or I felt I really knew marketing. I knew direct response marketing, and I knew copy. I understood I'd been studying it, doing it like a machine, um, like crazy. And so, um, so, when, um, but what I did needed to know was business systemization. And so at the time, Rich Sheffern was uh, and still is the man to go to for business systemization. So I became a client. Well, for whatever reason, he and I hit it off. Um, we had a couple of friends in common, like Jeff Walker. I ended up becoming friends with Jeff Walker and speaking for Jeff Walker and whatnot. And Rich used to then, after I was a client, he used to ask me to come into his strategic profits office and help him with certain reports, certain marketing. He would just say, what do you think of this? What do you think of this? What, can you read this report and tell me what to tweak or what you would change or what you would do different? And as I was helping him, I really caught this bug for... Uh, for internet marketers, like for you know helping internet marketers, because I remember the feeling of not knowing what to do. I remember the feeling of looking at my inbox day after day and at points not seeing any sales. Um, you know, I I remember what that was like when I first started, um, and and so I just got really excited about this idea of helping other internet marketers. And so I said to Rich, I said, I'm 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 really thinking of sharing with internet marketers some of the stuff that we're doing in my companies. I had started a couple of different companies and a couple of different niches that were, that were um, all, doing, uh, all doing pretty well. We had a couple of six-figure companies, a couple of seven-figure companies, and he said, listen, he said, come in and do it at Strategic Profits. Do it at Strategic Profits. You know, teach whatever you want, sell whatever you want at Strategic Profits. All I ask is that you take over the marketing for strategic profits and you run the marketing. And so I ended up continuing to run my companies and I was now running the marketing for Rich at Strategic Profits. And we went on to release um, a lot of tremendous products and uh, a lot of great uh, membership programs. He and I strategized and launched the Founders Club um, which I think launched with, I don't even know, 600 members or something like that at the time when we, when we first launched out of the gate. It's still thriving and growing today. Um, launched a whole bunch of other front-end products that I created from scratch and uh, did the marketing for and, uh, and did the launches and whatnot for. And it was an awesome, awesome experience. Um, in, Fast forward, it turned out that uh, it wasn't fair to my companies and it wasn't fair to the marketing team at Strategic for me to be doing both. And so I, um, I ended up going back into my companies full time and, and handed Rich back the, uh, the marketing department, so to speak. But he and I still continue to get together. I still continue to consult with him and uh, still continue to help with launches and, and certain marketing. But the best part of that whole experience, and this is the whole reason why I'm sharing all this with you, is that, is that I got to meet, hang out with, and pick the brains of some of the smartest marketers 
in the world. There is nobody that's got a better Rolodex than Rich does. If I was a betting man, which I'm not, I would bet that there is nobody who has access and almost immediate access to the, to, to the people that Rich does. For example, we got to meet with Jay Abraham, and Jay would consult with us on various projects. We consulted with Jay on various projects, and I got to pick his brain about what he did in the past, what he was doing with clients, what he did to generate leads, to convert those leads, to follow up with those leads, to maximize lifetime, lifetime customer value. We got to run tons and tons of copy by Clayton Makepeace. If you don't know who Clayton is, Clayton is one of the greatest living advertising copywriters today. Just one of his clients pay him over a million dollars a year in royalties. If you, if you know anything about copywriting, which is arguably the single most important skill set that an internet marketer could have, regardless of whether you're writing long form sales letters or video sales letters, doing webinars, email, whatever, you do any of those things, copywriting is the most valuable skill set. Well, if, excuse me, if you know anything about, um, if you follow any copywriters, Gary Benzavanga, who's another one of the greatest living copywriters, was copy chiefed by Clayton. In other words, Clayton was Gary's copy chief. That's how good um, this dude is. Of course, right around the corner um, from, uh, from the Strategic Profits offices was Michael Masterson, or his real name is Mark Ford. Michael Masterson is his pen name. So we got to and continue to, to this day, Mark today is, is not only a mentor, but I consider Mark a friend. Um, we got to, um, I got to talk to Mark and continue to talk to Mark about what they've done at Agora. How did they build Agora? How did they build each division? How did Mark just recently launch um, the Palm Beach letter and grow it to over 50,000 subscribers in 12 months? What did, they, what did they do? How did they staff it? How did they build the, the, the um, staff? What type of offers worked? What type of offers didn't work? What did they do on the back end? How did they do it, excuse me, on the back end? And, and as well, you know, guys like John Carlton, we got to pass copy by John Carlton and have John and then get on the phone with John and say, well, what's up with this hook or what's up with this idea or what do you think of this offer? Why? What's the difference? And so the education that I got as well as the inside peek into what these monster companies, monster clients were doing to grow so big and so fast was amazing. And because of that um, education at Strategic Profits, uh, you know, we went on when I was running the marketing to launch over 16 different um, successful front-end product funnels to acquire new customers. We did an internal launch um, of $700,000. It was actually a relaunch of a product called GPS, and it was all internal, no JV partners or anything. And in the first seven days, we did um, $700,000. And that whole experience is why, and this is really just amazing to me. It's why Rich recently said uh, when we were doing a live web stream or when I was doing a live web stream uh, about a year ago for the Strategic Profits folks, he said, there's three people I go to for advice on a consistent basis. He said, one is Jay Abraham, one is Mark Ford, Michael Masterson, and the other one is me. And, um, and so after Strategic Profits about a year ago, I um, by accident, I ended up, not by accident, but it was a weird situation. I, I, I ended up starting a coaching program called the Marketing Funnel Automation Partnership Coaching Program. And don't worry, I'm not pitching that today or anything like that. It's not even open um, really right now. But um, I started this Marketing Funnel Automation Partnership Coaching Program. And this is my pride and joy because this thing, uh, this thing teaches everything, about 20 hours worth of content, everything I learned and know and do to this day for my own companies, for clients, and for um, consulting clients and coaching clients about marketing funnels. And people like Charles Kirkland have gone through this. Charles Kirkland said it was the best program he ever went through hands down bar none, he would have paid 10 grand to go through it. Justin Brooks been through it, David Fry's been through it, Keith Baxter, and, and so many others. I then took the notoriety that I was getting from this program and continue to get, and consulting offers just came in. So today individuals pay 1300 a month just for um, 
a couple hours of consulting. I routinely get paid five grand in um, in a monthly uh, monthly fee to help work on funnels to do funnels from scratch. We do thirteen grand. We do twenty three grand. And so I share all of that with you in no way to brag at all, but to share with you that the the stuff I'm gonna I'm gonna give you today, the stuff that I'm going to share with you today is the real deal. This is not one click, you know, push a button, get rich, all that stuff is crap. All that stuff is garbage. I'm going to show you how to build, I'm going to show you three of the core pieces of building a wildly profitable customer acquisition funnel. And I'll tell you that the single most important thing for any of us to have in our business at all times, which takes priority above everything and anything else, is a customer acquisition vehicle, a way to acquire new customers at break even or better. Nothing else matters. Doesn't matter what webinar platform you use, what your website is built on, WordPress, doesn't matter if you use Optimized Press, doesn't matter if you, you do any of these things. If you do not have a, a, a customer acquisition marketing funnel that allows you to acquire new customers at break even, you don't have a business yet. And so what you're going to see, and this is why, let me just say as a quick aside, this is why you see so many of the biggest names in internet marketing routinely have to do product launches every handful of months because in between their product launches, they burn through cash because they don't have a consistent and reliable way to acquire new customers. They don't have a customer acquisition funnel in place. They might have JV partners, they might have affiliates, but they're then their business is vulnerable, their business is reliant on those JV partners, on those affiliates, on their calendars, on when they mail, if they mail, how they mail, if they get support, if they don't get support. And I could tell you from being on the inside of strategic and multiple big name businesses that um, that their JV partners flake out, they go MIA, they don't mail the way they're supposed to, or they don't mail on the day that they're supposed to. And so the point is the only way to, to ensure that your business is not vulnerable um, is to have a, a front-end marketing funnel that allows you to acquire new customers at break even or better. Now, the fact is that the marketing funnels, and I already said this, but the marketing funnels that generate $10 or more per lead, and we've had marketing funnels, we had a marketing funnel at Strategic Profits that did over $80 a lead, $80 an opt-in. Imagine, you get you know $80 an opt-in. Imagine 100 opt-ins, what that's worth. A thousand opt-ins, what, what that's worth. Incredible. But the marketing funnels that generate $10 or more per lead are built with seven strategies that are rarely used in the typical marketing funnels within the IM. And I'm going to share with you three of those strategies today. Now, these three strategies, everything that I'm going to share with you comes out of a paid training product. This is a product uh, this is a was a live like three hour plus training that I did for paying clients, and so everything that I share with you is going to come right out of that. And I'm going to show you at the end um, how for um, how how you can actually get the rest of this training, the full three hour training um, for free um, at the end of this if you're interested in it. Now before we jump in, I want to just make one distinction for you. And that is, uh, this is a graphic that I, I, um, I found on the, uh, on the net, and it says, you know, killer, killer sales funnel. What I want you to know up front is that uh, this is not a sales funnel. This is an offer funnel. And an offer funnel is part of a, of a marketing funnel. Right, an offer funnel is what the what the initial offer price point is going to be. Then, are you going to have an upsell? Are you going to have a downsell? What are they going to be uh, price point wise? What are they going to be in terms of the deliverables? Right, but that's all. That is a, a an offer funnel. The marketing funnel is everything that happens before you present your product. It's everything before you actually present your product. Everything you say, everything you do, how you ultimately create desire with prospects for your product or service 
leading up to the introduction of your product or service so that when you introduce your product or service, they're salivating, they want it, they're thankful, they're grateful, and the whole thing was a phenomenal experience for them. And so what I want you to really take away from this slide is that this is not a, a marketing funnel. This is, again, an offer funnel that is, uh, you know, is, is really, is a, it's a tactical um, diagram, right? You've got a front end offer, you've got an upsell, that's a tactic. You've got a second upsell, that's a tactic. You've got a downsell, that's a tactic. And the thing for you to understand before we get to the, the, the very first piece is that the technology and tactics behind a profitable marketing funnel are secondary. In other words, what, whether you use Infusionsoft, whether you use uh, Office Autopilot, or, or whether you use Aweber, whether you use uh, MailChimp, whatever, and, and whether you use um, you know, a, an OTO with a countdown, or you use a, a, an upsell sequence, or you have an upsell, then a downsell, then an upsell, then a downsell, uh, where, you know, all that stuff is secondary. At the root of a profitable marketing funnel is the strategy. The strategy behind the funnel is primary. And so I'm going to share with you some of the key components of that, of the, that strategic element today. And so let's get into the first, uh, the first secret piece of, uh, of all high converting marketing funnels. The first secret piece is what I call big idea or differentiated hook. And the big idea differentiated hook is really is just this. The goal of this, when it comes to your marketing funnel, and let's, let's say for the rest of this, um, for the rest of our time together today, let's just say that we're dealing with a marketing funnel. Let's use a very common marketing funnel, which is like a squeeze page to um, a four-part video series where, uh, let's say, there are three videos that are educational and then one video that's a sales video. Now, the length of a sales funnel, the length of a marketing funnel, is totally dependent on the complexity of the product, the number of features, the number of benefits, price point, and a bunch of other things like market sophistication, prospect awareness level. So some funnels are very brief, right? Some funnels are, are, very, are very short. Other funnels are long because there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of uh, features to the product. There's a lot of beliefs that... Um, that prospects need to have in order to buy, and I'm going to cover all that in just a bit, right? So some funnels short, some funnels long. For the rest of our little time together today, we're just going to say that it's squeeze page to four-part videos, a uh, four-part video series, three educational videos, and then one sales video. We're at, well, at the start of your marketing funnel is a lead magnet, right? And in this case, the lead magnet is it's the thing that we're offering to prospects to get them to give us their email address. And so in this case, with this little example, the lead magnet is the four-part video series, right? And so our first priority when it comes to that lead magnet and the squeeze page is to prevent something called mental opt-out, right? And I, I talk about this with clients all the time because this is such a, a huge thing in online marketing today because of the amount of competition, the amount of, uh, of advertisements that people get inundated with in their inbox, on social media, uh, you know, all over the place. And our goal is to prevent prospects from coming to your squeeze page, seeing your offer for the four-part video series. Um, it's to prevent them from saying, oh, I've seen that before, or oh, I've heard that before, or oh, I know what that is, or oh, I know what that's about. Right? Our goal is to make sure that they don't do that. And it takes seconds for prospects to come to a, a website, look at the headline uh, for the lead magnet, and make this assumption that, oh, I've seen it before. And so ultimately, our lead magnet our, the, the, the theme, the hook behind the marketing funnel content that we're going to present, that we're communicating on the squeeze page, needs to be backed with a big idea. It needs to be backed with a differentiated hook, a hook that is new, that is different, that is fresh, that is compelling. Right? If, you, if you're saying the same thing as the next guy, there's no way that you're going to have a Grand Slam home run marketing funnel. And so you've got to make sure that your whole hook is, 
is differentiated and is backed by a big idea in order to prevent this prospect mental opt-out. Now, Robert Collier, another legend of, of, of advertising, and if you don't have the Robert Collier letter book, you should absolutely pick that up, go to Amazon, grab it. That's a staple that you should read once a year, every year. Um, it, Robert Collier talked about, you know, you need to enter into the conversation that's already, uh, already in your prospect's mind, right? And so first and foremost, before we can even craft a differentiated hook, before we can even come up with ideas, uh, and judge whether these are big ideas, whether these are new, fresh, unique, different, etc. You've got to enter into the, the conversation already going on in your prospect's mind and understand exactly what it is that they're thinking and feeling as it relates to um, their problem, their, the, the problem that your product or service solves, um, their situation, what they think and feel about your marketplace that you're operating within as a whole, um, their feelings about other solutions, other offers, et cetera. You need to enter into the conversation that's going on in their mind. And one of the things that I, I suggest, and, and we don't have time to get into this today, uh, but one of the things that I suggest is that you begin thinking about their feelings, not just the things that they're saying. You know, a lot of people will say, go to um, forums, go to read other, you know, competitors' blog comments, um, go to Amazon and read the reviews and comments that people leave on books related to the same topic. And those are all good strategies for doing research. But you really need to take it a step deeper, and you really need to think about the feelings and emotions behind uh, those, those thoughts that they're having. Because remember, people buy out of emotion. People buy out of emotion. Great copy, great copy on a long-form sales letter, in an email, on a VSL, on a, on, a, on a sales webinar, whatever it may be, is emotionally driven. It taps into the emotions of your prospect. Sometimes they're negative emotions like fear, anxiety, disappointment. Other times they're more positive like hope, love, um, excitement, and, and, uh, and so on. But you need to enter into the conversation already in the prospect's mind, and you need to get uh, on an emotional uh, level. You need to understand the emotions behind them. Now, the next thing that you really need to do before you're able to craft this differentiated hook is understand your market sophistication level. And this is something that I talk about all the time. I first learned this from uh, legendary copywriter Gene Schwartz. Um, and Gene Schwartz talked about this idea that there are five levels of sophistication in every single market. Like every market goes through these five different levels of sophistication. And for time purposes, I'll just say that the market sophistication level is basically um, what have they seen before in terms of advertising and marketing claims and offers from competitors? Because the more marketing and advertising that prospects are exposed to, the more quote unquote sophisticated they become. And the more sophisticated that they become, the less and less lower sophistication marketing or, or lower levels of, of, uh, of, of marketing that has a lower level of sophistication, the less and less it works. Response goes down very, very quickly. An example that I would give you is, um, the simple example is in the weight loss market, right? At one point years ago, there was no weight loss pill market. Nobody was selling weight loss pills, supplements, fat burners, anything like that. And then all of a sudden, somebody created the very first fat burner. And then they, they went to the market with this fat burner. Well, when they first came to the market, that very first seller of the very first fat burner, they didn't have to come up with any kind of big idea or wild claim or they didn't have to use hype because nobody had heard claims before about a fat burner. All they had to say was, take this pill and you'll lose weight. right? And that, and that crushed it. It knocked it out of the park because... At the time, for that particular type of product, the market was at the lowest level of sophistication. Well, over time, as other competitors came into the marketplace, the sophistication level of prospects rose. And so marketers had to elevate their marketing, and they brought it to the next level of sophistication. The next level of sophistication is where they, they, they took their claim of, you know, take this pill and lose weight, and then it became uh, a bigger a bigger claim, a bigger promise, if you will, like um, take this pill and lose seven pounds, um, lose seven pounds in, in the next 17 days or something like that. 
right? And so their marketing, as prospects became more sophisticated because they were exposed to more and more marketing, marketers uh, had to raise their level of sophistication with their marketing. Because if a marketer came, like think about today, if a company came out with a fat burner and their ad said, take this pill and lose weight. Like, it would fall flat. It would fall flat because people would say, I've heard it before. I've seen it before. Um, you know, th those type of, that type of, um, of marketing message, marketing promise, doesn't match the sophistication level of the marketplace. Right? And so there are other levels of sophistication that include things like, uh, or that require things like a unique mechanism, like when you see fat burners that say, you know, take, you know, the, like this fat burner includes some crazy wild, you know, bark from the rainforest that absorbs fat in your intestinal tract and blah, 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 right? That's what's called a unique mechanism in the promise. And so the point is, without going on and on for time purposes, that you need to know your market sophistication level. You can't craft a differentiated hook or a big idea for your marketing funnel without knowing what the sophistication level is. See, because I've seen, I've seen um, marketing funnels from some, you know, some of my clients that are well known in, um, in let's say, the internet marketing community, and I've seen marketing funnels fall flat, not because their product wasn't great, not because they didn't have a great reputation, but simply because their marketing message was at a lower sophistication level than where the market was at. In other words, the marketing message that they were using was appropriate for the marketplace maybe three years ago, four years ago. But it's no longer appropriate because the market is too sophisticated now. And so, for example, if we looked at, um, if, if any of you or many of you have been around the internet marketing community for any length of time, then you know that traffic is a huge, a huge topic. Well, you know, years ago, years ago when the market wasn't that sophisticated, um, you know, uh, you could talk about, you, marketers could make claims like, you know, here's how to get, whatever, a thousand visitors to your site a month. And people would jump at that, right? Because the market was at, was at that sophistication level. Today, the internet marketing community as a whole is, is much more sophisticated than that. And that type of offer only works on the extreme newbie. Because today, marketers in the IM, in the IM space want to hear, well, what's the, how, how am I going to get the, th first of all, in the internet marketing community, that claim has been made a thousand and one times. So today, that's why you see marketers that will say, how to get a thousand visitors a day to your website for free by targeting um, you know, your competitor's website and paying a dime per visitor, right? Because that is an example of, of marketing at a higher level of sophistication using something called the unique results delivery mechanism compared to the marketing message that just says how to get a thousand visitors to your site a day, which is a, a, a marketing message that's at a much lower level of sophistication. So you need to know what your market sophistication level is. You also need to know what are the dominant appeals, claims, and benefits being presented in your market right now by competitors, right? So what are competitors claiming? What claims are they making about their particular product? What, does their, what are they saying their product does and how their product does it and how their product works and why it works? What are the dominant appeals that are being made? Appeals meaning like are they, um, you know, how to exploit Facebook or a Facebook loophole or, you know, using the traffic example. What are the dominant appeals? Or are they saying like, you know, for example, sometimes with SEO you see people that will say, you know, your website's ready to get booted from Google, which is more of a fear-based um, appeal. So what are the dominant appeals, claims, and benefits? that are being presented in your market right now. The reason why you need to know this is because if you're going to create a differentiated hook, you need to know what everybody else is saying. Because you're not going to simply come along and say what everybody else is saying. If you say what everybody else is saying, then you will, you will not prevent mental opt-out. Prospects will come to your site, will see that, and will be like, you know, I've, I've heard that already. I've seen, it, I, I've seen it already. And so once you understand these things, once you understand these things, the next step that I want you to do, the next step to take, is I want you to look at the content that you're going to present in your marketing funnel. Now, let me just say this very, very quickly, that you know, your funnel, a good marketing funnel, is, 
is education based and I'm going to explain that in just a, in just a few minutes it's education based meaning that there's information that you're going to give the information that you give is going to set up the sale for you and create desire um, for prospects uh, desire within prospects for your product but it's educational based it's content you're going to give information and so what I want you to do is I want you to think about what is the most surprising thing about your content what is the most unusual surprising astonishing thing about your content what is the most potentially um, unexpected thing about your content or what in your content is potentially contrarian compared to what is being presented in the in the marketplace right and so an example of this is um, off the top of my head like there was a promotion at one point for a health newsletter and the promotion said something like um, you know it was something like why why uh, you know it was like something like water water the deadly killer question mark and then there was like a uh, sub the subhead was something about how you know the you know how like water is you know water is responsible you know water is responsible for blah 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 what you know and why you shouldn't follow your doctor's advice about water and then it went on to talk about the different types of water plastics and things like that and ultimately it went on to sell a health newsletter but that's an example of something contrarian or something surprising it wasn't just made up and pulled out of their rear end um, it was it came from the content that they were going to present but rather than take the typical approach rather than take the everyday ordinary approach that most other marketers were taking they took a totally unique angle now if you're into health wellness fitness nutrition supplementation etc and you see that that's absolutely going to catch your attention right and if nothing else it's going to pique your curiosity and get you to read on and that's the that's the goal of the of the headline of uh, of of any uh, of any sales piece. Um, uh, we don't, I'm going to skip this, but I'll just say this: that you know, oftentimes, if you can turn your big idea, your differentiated hook, into a metaphor or communicate it via a metaphor, depending on what it is that you're selling, oftentimes you can turn a sometimes complex message into a very uh, easy to understand, instantly accessible message. A great example of this was like um, there was a gigantic multi-million dollar um, campaign done many years ago at Agora. Bill Bonner, the founder of Agora, created this uh, this marketing piece, and it was something like uh, the headline was something like the new railroad. And then he went on to um, talk about in the piece. Uh, to talk about how years ago when the railroad was being laid in the United States, you know, it was a huge industry, people made gigantic fortunes, it was incredible, blah, 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 and now there, you know, like then, there's a new railroad being laid and more fortunes are going to be created. Now there wasn't, he went on to describe a, an opportunity in stocks, certain particular stocks, but that was a metaphor. He wasn't actually talking about a railroad stock or an opportunity to make money with railroads. That was his kind of, uh, his metaphor. And so with their marketplace, people immediately got it. They, um, and what they got, just to, so that you understand this, what they got was that the opportunity that they have today was that they have today if they take action on what the letter was presenting was is just like the opportunity that folks had years ago when the actual railroad was being laid and the people that jumped at that opportunity years ago created wild fortunes and the people that didn't um they missed out on a huge opportunity and now today you have that same choice Right, very powerful. Just to sum it up with that whole um, that whole metaphor. Of course, it needs to be tangible, concrete. I already talked about emotion, and so let's go on for time purposes to the second secret piece uh, of uh, of all the, all high converting marketing funnels, and that's a single unique big promise. Now, of course, your 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 big promise stems from your understanding of market sophistication. Right? It stems from market sophistication because you need to know what are the promises that your market has heard already. 
What are they been? What have they been accustomed to hearing? What are they routinely hearing? Where are they at right now? What have they heard before? What haven't they heard before? And so on. Your your um, single unique big promise and single meaning one. That's it. One power one. I first I really Mark Ford Michael Masterson drove that into me. One one idea one concept one big promise and it's unique that's why we call it a, a, you know we start with a differentiated hook and then we make a unique promise so we have a unique idea a unique hook a differentiated hook that ties in with a single unique big promise and that single unique big promise needs to resolve an urgent problem right and the more pressing that problem is the more urgent that problem is the better your response is going to be when you address a problem that's a ho-hum problem, that's not so urgent, that's not so critical, um, then you give prospects the ability to, um, to delay and you make your marketing job that much, more, uh, that much more difficult. Now in most markets that have a high level of sophistication, your promise is powered by that unique results delivery mechanism. And the unique, the unique results delivery mechanism is the unique part either it, it either truly is unique or it's unique because nobody's talking about it it's the unique component of your product or service that actually delivers the results it's what what is it about what you do that delivers results like when I talk to coaching students in the in the marketing funnel automation partnership coaching program and I work with them on their funnels and somebody is in a very competitive niche like I have somebody in, um, I have a couple people in personal development, a couple clients in, in, in personal development. I say, well, what is different about what you do than Tony Robbins, than, than what Jim Rohn did, than Brian Tracy? Like, in other words, what is the unique aspect of what you teach that's going to deliver the results? Because ultimately, the results that people want are the same. They want the, the, they want the same results from Tony Robbins and from Brian Tracy and, and from my clients that they want from every other personal development um, expert or guru. But what, what is, how are you going to, to actually uniquely deliver those results? Right now, you see this oftentimes on, um, on infomercials, when an infomercial will say the secret is in the German steel, the secret is in the titanium grip, the secret is in the 46 degree angle, right? Like, how do you sell a new golf club and promise people that the golf club is going to help them hit straighter and farther? Well, you have to look at what, what has been done already, what has been hammered home already, and now your golf club has to have a different mechanism. The result that it delivers to prospects is going to be ultimately the, the, the same. We might, you know, the promise might be slightly different or we might say it differently, right, so that we're not promising the, the very same thing. But the way we're able to deliver the results has to be differentiated from everything else. So if we came out with a new golf club, our golf club might have the angle of the head might be slightly different, or the length of the club, or the grip, or who knows what, right? But that's that unique aspect is what becomes the unique results delivery mechanism, and it's what gives your promise legs, meaning it's what makes it believable, acceptable, right? And so, <clears throat> and so um, your um, your promise has to have that unique results delivery mechanism. Now, let me just say something here. If you're wondering, like, well, what the heck? I don't know if my product or service has anything unique um, about it. Well, that's a different conversation for us to have. But I'll tell you that sometimes you can find a unique results delivery mechanism, if you will, or, or, or something even, you know, something unique about what it is that you're teaching, telling, just by looking at what everybody else isn't talking about. Um, for example, there's a story about Claude Hopkins and Schlitz Beer, where Claude Hopkins went into Schlitz Beer, he went into the manufacturing plant, he was being shown around because he was going to do the, some copy for them, some advertising for them, and, and you know, he was being shown around, and he saw something that caught his attention right away, and he said, what, what's going on over there? They were doing something with, I think it was bottles or something. And the guy was like, oh, that's just our, you know, that's the sterilization thing. And Claude Hopkins was like, well, how, how, what's, what's going on? Like, what is it? What is it? Oh, it's a special sterilization process that we use to sterilize, excuse me, every single bottle. And Claude 
was like, well, why aren't you, you know, screaming this from the roof, rooftops? That's incredible. Like it shows, demonstrates the quality of what it is that you, you do. And the guy was like, well, because every manufacturing plant does that. And Claude Hopkins was like, but nobody's talking about it. And so they were able to jump on something that wasn't really unique, but nobody else was talking about. And, um, and so it automatically, um, it automatically differentiated them, and it propelled Schlitz Beer at the time um, much, much, much further ahead in terms of market share. Another example, I used to, um, one of my companies, when I used to speak with uh, and coach chiropractors, um, we would talk to chiropractors about um, simply talking about what type of x-ray machine do you have or what type of table do you have, right? Or if they were doing this thing called spinal decompression, you know, what type of spinal decompression table do you have? Even taking something like what kind of x-ray machine do you have, um, even if it was the same exact x-ray machine as every other doctor in their area, if we said, you know, um, all x-rays performed on the, um, on the blah, blah, blah x-ray machine from Switzerland, it gives the impression that there's something of value there, right? Just like when on the infomercial, when they say German steel, I have no idea, is German steel better than any other steel? Maybe German steel, for all I know, is worse, but they say it and it immediately makes you feel like, oh man, that's got to be good, it's German steel, right? But meanwhile, um, that's marketing. That's the beauty of marketing, understanding the way people respond. And that's the, the, the value of this um, single, unique, um, big promise being powered by a unique results delivery mechanism. You also need to understand the deeper benefits behind the obvious benefits. So when you're making a promise, a promise is of an outcome, is of a result that they're going to experience from your product or uh, from your content and your marketing funnel thanks to your your unique results delivery mechanism, um, you want to make sure that you're getting to the deeper benefits, the deepest benefits possible, not just superficial benefits. In other words, you know, I, I, I often give this example of, let's say there was a, a special pen that we were selling to writers, and we said one of the features of this pen is that it's got a cushion grip, right, that's a feature. And so a lot of people, a lot of marketers would say, well, the benefit then is that your hand doesn't cramp. But what's the deeper benefit to the writer of, of that, right? What's the benefit behind the benefit of that? Well, the benefit is that they, continue to, they can continue to write. They can write long term. They can continue to enjoy their, um, their craft without fear of, you know, carpal tunnel or arthritis, um, right? So there's a deeper benefit. It's not just, well, you can write, you won't experience any hand cramps. You know, there's a deeper, a deeper reason why they don't want hand cramps. It might be, again, that they're paid to write. It might be, the, it might be out of fear of, again, developing, uh, you know, whatever, a joint condition, whatever. But look for the deeper benefits, the benefits of the benefits. Uh, show, don't tell, for time purposes, let me see here. Turn your promise into a picture, and what that means is really uh, turn your promise into a picture, and a picture that touches as many of the five senses as possible. In other words, you know, when, when you make a promise, you want the promise to be tangible, to be real, to stir emotion, and you do that by turning that promise into a picture, by painting a picture of the, the, the promise for your prospect. And you want, to, you want to appeal to as many of the five senses as possible. What that means is like, for example, if we were, if we were doing something like, um, if we were talking about, uh, if we were selling a fat loss product, it's not just like, look, you know, take this product and you'll lose 10 pounds in, in, uh, in, in 24 hours. Um, understand first and foremost that people can't picture numbers, right? So, you, you know, I give this example all the time of the difference between saying to somebody, saying to especially like a, a woman, you know, um, man, he crushed that ball, he hit it 300 yards. Well, what does 300 yards look like versus us saying he crushed that ball, he hit it, he hit it beyond the equivalent of three football fields. Right now, you can picture that, right? And so, and if we said, you know, the thing was amazing from the moment that he hit that ball, man, that thing went crack. 
and it soared up in the air. We could actually feel the wind come off that ball as it took off, as if it was a rocket, man. And we saw that thing sail out. We lost it almost in the sun, and it went the equivalent of three football fields. See how tapping into, seeing it, hearing it, feeling it, right? You can't always tap in all, all five, but you want to get as close to that as, as possible. That becomes tangible. Just saying to somebody, you'll hit the ball 300 yards, isn't. And so you want your promise to appeal to your prospect's mind, mind, their heart, right? So we've got logic, emotional, and of course, um, if you're selling business to business, um, you're selling money making, you want to show them um, in their wallet. It's got to appeal to their to the prospect's feelings, beliefs, and desires. Uh, I'm going to skip this for, for time purposes, and I'm going to go on to the final piece. And since Ken started about six after, I'm going to finish at six after. <laughs> Is that okay, Ken? Absolutely, absolutely. You're giving us great content. You just uh, you take what you need. Okay, cool. So this is one of the most valuable. Uh, I'm going to give you um, I'm going to give you a, a peek into this what I call EBM content or really education based pre selling content. Now this is everything that you do from the time somebody opts in right up to the point where you segue into the presentation or excuse me the introduction of your product or service so everything that you say do after they opt in uh, all the way up to when you right before you're about to segue into the introduction of your product and it's again education based pre-selling content and let me let me just say this that everything that you say everything that you do everything that you present to prospects in the um, in the uh, in your in your EBM really in your funnel as a whole, but especially in your education-based content, should be done strategically to further the sale, meaning to create more desire in the prospect's mind, more demand for your product. Now, I'll tell you that in 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 like in the example of the the four-part video uh, with where it's three parts education, one part sales. Um, we won't even talk about the product or service until maybe the very end of the third video or more than likely the fourth video. So 75% of the marketing funnel is education based. But here's the thing, we're not educating for the sheer sake of educating, we're educating in a way that furthers the sale. We're not teaching just to teach, right? We're not, we're not teaching just to teach, we're teaching and educating in a way that furthers the sale, that moves prospects one step closer to understanding why they ultimately need your product when you present it, to get them excited about your product, to get them to desire your product, to get them to jump at your product when you ultimately um, present it. And so understand that everything that we say and do and when we say and do it is done strategically to further the sale. Now the goal of education-based content is to pre-sell. And here are two definitions of pre-selling. One is to condition a potential customer in advance for later purchase of a product. I like how it says for later purchase because later is at the end of the funnel. So it's kind of like our way of educating somebody and then at the very end making them an offer for the solution that we, we talked about. Like, like we, I used to teach chiropractors to uh, give presentations uh, and we used to do marketing for them where they would talk about you know how to relieve low back pain naturally without crazy treatments, surgery, drugs, blah blah blah. And then they would get up and they would talk for 45, 50 minutes about all of the the all of the, the options that people have to alleviate back pain naturally, right? They really actually talk about all of the options that they have to relieve back pain in general. But they'd go through and for all of the all of the options they would highlight that weren't chiropractic they would give the negatives they would explain the negatives of over the counter pain painkillers in terms of gastrointestinal distress and internal bleeding and and whatnot um, and risk for other conditions they would talk about prescription medications and the negatives there they would talk about surgery and the negatives there and the recovery time etc they would go through other things like trying to deal with it with massage and why that wouldn't work because it was more um, spine related and blah 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 and go through everything and then they would go through chiropractic of course when they talk about chiropractic they would give all of the benefits and you know maybe one extremely weak negative 
right? So everything else was was negative, 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 chiropractic, positive, 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 one little weak negative. And then they would segue into giving them an, an opportunity to, to, um, to come see them for like a complimentary consultation. And so what they did was they set the buying criteria. They pre-sold chiropractic even before they offered chiropractic, right? And then at the end, they, they offered chiropractic. The second part of the definition, it says to precondition a customer for subsequent purchase or create advanced demand, to create advanced demand for a product, to create demand before you even present the product. That's what we're trying to, to do. And our goal with this is to ultimately create rapport and a trusted authority-based relationship with prospects, and this is key while leading the prospect to buy, rather than just trying to hard sell them, right? We're leading them to buy. We're leading them to buy. Remember, people don't like to be sold. They like to buy, but they do not like to be sold. The experience of being sold is not a pleasant one. The experience of buying is an extremely pleasant one, right? And so our job is to lead the prospect to buy, to lead them to desire, to create that advanced demand, right? Rather than trying to hard sell them, all giving them a sense of freedom um, of choice, a freedom of decision, all giving them the feeling like they decided, they made the choice, that they're buying, not being sold. See, when you use this approach, you don't have to sell, right? You know, um, I forget um, who it was who said that the, I think it was Peter Drucker, actually, who said the job of marketing is to make selling superfluous. The job of marketing is to make selling unnecessary, right? There's a huge difference between marketing and selling, right? Marketing to me is really is, is you know, we could swap out the word pre-sell for marketing. Marketing is conditioning the, the, the prospect to buy. It's creating demand, creating excitement, and leading the prospect to buy, to want to buy, rather than trying to hard sell them. In the process, giving them this freedom of choice, this sense of a freedom of decision that they bought. Right? And so that's our goal with education-based content, to give you some, some quick insight, and then I'm going to wrap up. How do you craft this content? Well, the, one of the big questions to ask yourself is, what do prospects need to believe to buy? This is something that I cover in almost all of my trainings. I cover in-depth in the Marketing Funnel Automation Partnership Coaching Program. This thing is huge. What do prospects need to believe to buy? What do they need to believe about themselves, about you? and about your product, right? What do they need to buy? Because ultimately, ultimately, it's, you know, EVM content is all about you presenting facts and figures, statements, claims, promises of benefits, you know, throughout the, the funnel that um, establish the beliefs that prospects need to have in order to be able to buy. And the EVM content, the education-based Reselling content is this linear progression. It's this linear step of claims and benefit statements backed by proof, which is a discussion for a totally different day, um, the right proof elements in the right order at the right time. Uh, but it's this linear progression of claims and benefit statements. Kind of like, you know, um, if you were a trial attorney. You know, right now in Florida, really it's all over, but the, is the George Zimmerman case. And, you know, I love these court cases. I love court cases. I get sucked into all these crazy court cases only because I love to watch how the, um, the prosecutor presents their argument. Because the way a prosecutor presents their argument is it's this linear progression of claims that they make about what happened backed up with proof. And so they'll lead you the whole, step of, the whole step of the way. They know the end result that they want you to have, that they want the jury to have, let's just say, right? And, and so they then work back from there. And so, well, all right, they want the jury to believe that, whatever, the guy's guilty. And so before that, what do they need? They need to believe that he, that he killed, you know, this person. They, you know, that he killed, that George Zimmerman killed Trayvon Martin, that, you know, that um, they, need, they need people to believe that it was premeditated. They need people to believe that he was the aggressor. They need, they need people to believe that uh, Trayvon wasn't confrontational, that, that he tried to get away, that he wasn't doing anything wrong, um, that George Zimmerman intentionally, you know, shot him, all these things, right, and, and, and more, 
Well, there's a logical and linear order in which those things have to get presented because certain beliefs get built on top of prior beliefs. Right? There are certain things that get built on top of each other, and every time they present a claim or they make a statement about what happened, they then back it up with a preponderance of proof, with a preponderance of proof, and drive home, and we'll show you from multiple angles why what they said was accurate, why what they just said, what they just claimed, what they, the statement that they just made is accurate, and then they'll go on to the next thing, and they'll do the next thing, and they present it methodically in this linear order leading up to the, um, the end result. And in our case, this is a big part of how we do the, uh, the education-based pre-selling content. And so with that being said, uh, that's it for me. Um, obviously, there's a lot more to cover with even the education-based content. And of course, there are the other, you know, Secret Piece 4, Secret Piece 5, Secret Piece 6, Secret Piece 7. And so I mentioned earlier that everything that I talked to you about today came out of a three-hour-plus um, training that I did for clients just uh, a couple of weeks ago. And so um, this, was, this was only available for paid clients. Um, when I did this. And I'll tell you that this training turned out to be one of the absolute best hands down bar none uh, trainings that I've done in a very long time. I was blown away by the quality. It turned out to be a lot better than what I thought. It was originally a bonus webinar for people that bought another training course. And it turned out so good. We got so many um, comments back, <clears throat> excuse me, on this and so many requests for the recording and whatnot that um, I'm in the process of finishing up a sales letter that's going to sell it for $97. But that sales letter isn't done yet. It'll probably be done tomorrow, maybe Saturday at the latest. And so I'm willing to give you the entire three hour plus training today um, for free when you grab a copy of a different training that I, that I have called the 26 Advanced Conversion, uh, 26 Advanced Marketing Funnel Conversion Tactics. That is a, a training that walks you through 26 of the most advanced proven marketing funnel um, conversion tactics that are used in some of the most complex marketing funnels that I've been a part of. These are not, it's not any newbie stuff. Mark my words, at least 20, if not 22 of the 26 you've never heard of before, you've never heard anybody talk about before, you've never seen anywhere before, yet these are tactics that are being used to power some of these marketing funnels with um, enormous conversion rates. Again, you know, up over $20, 30 $40 um, per lead. Uh, a few of these tactics we used at Strategic Profits in the funnel that was doing over $80 a lead. And so um, I'll give it to you. I'll give you the entire three hour plus training uh, called the seven critical elements of every high converting marketing funnel that'll give you, that'll go in detail, more in detail into the stuff that I talked about today, as well as, you know, um, the other uh, four um, elements. Um, and I'll give you the advanced marketing funnel conversion tactics course, which is, I think, about a two-hour course, maybe just shy of two hours. It comes with video, audio. It comes with a full transcript. Um, I think it comes with the slide presentation. And as ridiculous as this sounds, I'll give you everything today for, uh, for 29 bucks. That's it. I'm not here to sell the marketing funnel automation partnership coaching program because it's really not publicly available or I don't really make it available, uh, make people jump through hoops to get into that. Uh, and so if you want that little um, package, there's a special web page that you can go to. This is not an affiliate link for Ken or, or anything like that. Um, there's a special link set up because uh, the offer is only good until tomorrow night at midnight, and then that's it because, again, we're going to start selling the um, that three-hour three, three hour plus training for uh, like 97 bucks. But you can get it there, marketingfunnelautomation.com forward slash Ken dash webinar. When you go to that page, it'll look like this. We set this up uh, this morning just for Ken. Like I said, at 11.59 tomorrow night, the page will automatically redirect to the home page on our website, and so you won't be able to get it anymore, but you get everything for just 29 bucks, and you'll be able to access everything right away. So you'll access the entire three hour plus training and the 26 hour, uh, excuse me, the 26 hour, the 26 
advanced marketing funnel conversion tactics course, the whole nine for um, for twenty bucks. And so that's my gift and that's my spiel today, Ken. Thank you so much. Wow, what uh, what great content and. And if you you guys don't realize the quality of the the, the content that uh, Todd has to offer by now, I don't know how to tell you. Everybody hung in there, you know. We we uh, uh, we uh, just crammed uh, high level tactics there for you and strategies. Uh, Todd did a masterful job of doing that, and he really is uh, an incredible person in terms of building these systems and knowing. You know all of the elements behind it that really make things uh, uh, move move smoothly for you in your your marketing funnel. So, thanks so much for being here, Todd. It's always uh, an honor to be able to listen to what you have to offer and uh, to uh, learn every single day. Um, I was a little bit panicked there for a second when you said 26 hours. <laughs> But I'd, lo I'd, I'd love to do the 26 hours. We'll have to get together sometime for a week, I guess, huh? <laughs> no 26 hours. 26 <laughs> tactics, no 26 hours. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for being here. I hope that uh, you enjoyed uh, today's session. Hope that you'll take um, Todd up on his great uh, offer uh, for that uh, that package for you. And uh, I hope you'll come to JV Alert Live uh, lots of events coming up. Uh, be sure and go to jvalertlive.com. Get on the list there so you'll be notified of all of the events. We're doing over 30 events in all kinds of cities around the country, and I'm excited about all we're doing. Hopefully we'll be able to get Todd back to another one really, really soon. So uh, Absolutely. Co come see us uh, there, and everybody have a, a great week. Rest of the week, a great weekend, and we'll talk to you soon. Everybody have a great Thank night. Thank you so much, Ken, and take care. Thanks again for having me, and take care, everybody. Thanks for hanging in there with me.